I see you like to put your lips around SRK. Who doesn't? Agreed. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our stupid directions of Corbin. I'm Rick. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. <laughs> You're still on Twitter, huh? Yeah. 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 You know they're not paying the rent? I couldn't tell you who's paying their rent. <laughs> what social media platform you is. You must. Well, most of them are, except that one. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't care. <laughs> uh, and uh, thanks for also some Patreon. Follow us for your Twitter account. Subscribe if you don't like button. Thank you so much. Yeah. You beautiful, beautiful, stupid babies. How you doing? All things considered, pretty dang good. Terrible. No, I'm pretty oh, dang good. Okay, good. Yeah. Today we're doing a movie review. <laughs> and it's uh, Welcome Back to Classic Month. It's Classic Month. It's Classic Month. And today we got a Tamil classic with. Superstar, he's Best a little, wigs in the little, little superstar. I don't think at this point though, this was a natural, oh, no, 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 this was a natural. This was a hundred percent his head of hair. Then, yes, I'm talking about now. No, yeah, nobody no. has a better wig. <laughs> uh, 1978 Tamil film Mulam Malaram, Mulam Malaram, right? No Corbinization on that one, bad boy. <laughs> Very nice. Take that and shove it in your butthole. Uh... <laughs> Directed by Jay Mahendran. Uh, and Directorial debut at directorial the time. Directorial debut, yeah. screenplay, but it, uh, based on a novel by Uma Chandran. Chandran. Yeah, not to be confused with Uma Thurman. Yes, composed by Raja Sir, uh, starring superstar Rajnikanth. Also starring Sarath Babu as uh, Kumaran and Shoba as Vali. And Jayakshmi as Manga. Yes. Uh, and so this came out in 1978. And because it's classic month, that's why we're doing a bunch of old films right now. The first film was Guide, the Hindi film. Uh, yep. If you haven't seen that review, go check that out. But yep. this will obviously be a 100% spoiler review. Yep. Uh, if you, it came out many years ago. So if you haven't watched it, go watch it. Come back uh, if you don't want to be spoiled like a little naughty little boy or girl that you are. Rick, your initial thoughts. One of my favorite classics we've ever watched with what is, in my view, some of the best acting we've seen in classics. You hated it? See, this is why I say Rick only likes Bollywood films. That's right. God damn it. It's true. <laughs> so you liked it. I, I loved it. Good. Yep. Uh, I, I, I have nothing but superlatives about this film to talk about. I think we will, for the most part, agree there's some parts that I did not enjoy as okay, much. Okay, I'd be interested to see what uh, those might be. And, and we'll get into that. After but I have we, so many good things Yeah, I have much more about. good things than I do bad. There's just certain, and it's, 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 a, it's a through line, I guess, for me. Yeah. Uh, from stuff that I don't normally like in, in certain films. But uh, we'll let, just get into started. Oh, I already know. I know what one of them is going to be. <laughs> I, I already can tell you what we're going to talk about. Uh, and you're going to know why I loved it, and I'm going to know why you yeah. didn't. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's just get into Let's start with the Superstar Rush. This is our third Superstar Rush and Khan film. Yep. Uh, and all of them so far have been his older works. Right. Uh, we started with... Uh, he believe, was supporting in the first thing I think it was, we saw. Was no, Kamal Hassan's film? No. Or was that the second I one? I think Thotapathy was the first one. I think one. you're right. Yeah, Thotapathy was the first one. And then we saw one. the one with Shridevi and Kamal. And Kamal. 16-something. Where he was supporting. Yes. And then now this one. And so it's all older so far. And I, I, I've been told that that's when he was more focused on uh, being more... A thespian addict, yeah. uh, and uh, then he became larger than himself. Right, obviously later in his career, and yeah, kind of just had to, you know, do more stuff for his fans and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, the Nothing... whole riffic conversation yes. about star and actor. Um, so, but I do want to see some of his more recent stuff as well to get that feel of what a more recent superstar film is. Me too. I think it's like, especially if we got to see it in theaters one day. Yeah. I think that, I think that would be really interesting. Yeah. But anyways, let's talk about him. Um, I thought this is probably, 
And it's hard because all of his performances have been really, really good. Oh, I have no problem saying it. You it's my this favorite. Is, is, is this his best? Absolutely. And I have no no issues yeah. with that. It's uh, it's it's for me his best I think, that we've seen. I think he did a really really good job. And also, I think a lot of that has to do with uh, the director and how what because I I did do some research and this was a very revolutionary for Tamil cinema at the time. I can tell. Um, and what with what they tried to do, and also for Rajnikanth himself because he played mostly a villain. Not that he was playing a predominantly good person in this fully. Right. Um, but he was predominantly just a villain. Mm. And then this guy wanted him as the lead actor in this. Right. Um, and th I believe the title also means Thorn and Rose. And the, and the Rose. Rose. Something like yeah, that. something along those and lines. And I didn't know if that meant if it was just about Rajnikanth, the Thorn and the Rose, or if it was him and his sister. Right. Obviously, I, you could obviously leave that open to an interpretation. Yeah, my, my interpretation would be... It's it's that character. Him? Yeah, he's both a beautiful person and an ass. That you get sweet, beautiful things from that character, but you also get painful, not okay things from that character. Mm -hmm. A very uh, there were so many things that surprised me mm. about the film. Mm -hmm. And focusing on him, um, it became really clear that and I did more research on him as we typically do. Um, it's it shows that he had a love for theater mm -hmm. and a love for the craft when he came into film and it 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 shows his his emotional availability his honesty his listening his um just uh nothing but i as impressive for me as the stuff that I've seen where I've been impressed with, say, Kamal Hassan, yeah. I, can, I can see why, in just the little we've seen of him, I can see why he has the reputation he has. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I loved his relationship with his sister. One Probably my f favorite part of the entire film was the fact that this was a lot more brother-sister mm -hmm. centered. Yeah. And their beautiful chemistry and relationship mm -hmm. uh, I, I really enjoyed that and we'll get to her as well but like he had some beautiful moments with her yeah um, and and kind of his showing of him wanting his toxic masculinity side yeah at, at times yeah but then also his deep like he, he there's nobody he loves more than his sister and there's no he wouldn't do for his sister and as he's well. very kind kind compassionate person as is she i i wrote down early in my notes they're wonderful, mm -hmm. meaning the brother and sister mm -hmm. and their their chemistry. And I wrote down lovely scene. One of the best scenes I've seen in a classic film is when he's crying and she wants him to come to dinner mm -hmm. early on in the film. Yeah, I believed I was watching a brother and sister and I didn't believe they were indicating there weren't false moments. It, it I. Again, some of the most for 1978. It's as grounded as acting gets. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, her as well. Um, who I'm yeah, about. I want to talk about both ladies at length. Yeah, Subia, right? And that was his sister. Um, that was his sister, right? I'm not. Her, yeah, who, her, Va Vali is Vali. Her, Vali, Vali was his sister. Yeah. Okay, sorry, Subia. Yeah, who Shoba. I do believe committed. Suicide or yeah, that, something. Happened. We can get into that now if you want. Yeah, oh, I don't because I, I have know. a lot to say about that. We might want to save that for the back end because okay. I, I have a lot to say about yeah that because it's also manga. Yeah, they both killed themselves the same year. Really? Yeah. Oh man, jeez. Uh, but yeah, which broke my heart. The the fact that they were so they're brilliant talented uh, they were they are such good actresses let's talk about suba first um <sighs> she gave young sri devi vibes really of of like her capacity as an actor and her her, as her screen presence oh hello no oh, it's my mother oh hi mom <laughs> um but she's yeah, probably her, wondering where i am probably <laughs> she just woke up <laughs> but she um her her screen presence and her capacity as an actor, and obviously her beauty, uh, she's absolutely gorgeous. But like she, she didn't say a lot in this movie, but she conveyed a ton. Like she, I don't think she had that much dialogue in this film. It was a lot of looks, which mm -hmm. is obviously I think goes to what the director wanted to do in this film. Yeah, um, he wanted to do a lot with just silence and 
without actually going into a heavy dialogue film. Mm -hmm. uh, and she, man, she did she convey so much with her expressions, her eyes, her just, I, I loved her. She probably my favorite performance in the whole thing, even above Rajnikant. The two ladies were, were even more standout. They were, they were incredible. And I loved how every moment of emotion was believable. Most especially close-ups of tears. I didn't in any way think they needed to add tears to make it look like they were crying. I could see the emotion. I could see the welling up. Everything felt grounded. The whole of the film gave me the same vibes I get when I see stuff as good as last film show mm. or a really really well done student film mm. because you know everything is being done it's like college sports everyone's doing it because of they just are so passionate about it yeah and i could it i just felt that in every frame and the thing that was most impressive to me was how seriously i felt those three took the roles and how good they were in their roles. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. She was made and I loved the character of Manga as well. The yep. fact that she was this fiery, um, um, not taking any shit yeah. character. Uh <laughs> pretty amazing to have such powerful Powerful I, women, and we'll talk about the song. Nineteen seventy-eight. I, I loved her song. Yeah, <laughs> I absolutely. Loved. We'll talk about what Rajasar did in this, but I loved her song. I thought it was absolutely hilarious. Yeah, uh, but yeah, she had such a great character, um, and it was in she, her character obviously developed right from. Uh, it was obviously very dated for like having a character just like gluttonous, just eating yeah. all the time. Yeah, but you know, nineteen seventy-eight. Yeah, those are the just, forgivable things. That's what it was. What happened in the day? Yeah. <laughs> making fun of people for their vices um but the fact that you know she had this kind of arc from being almost childlike to becoming a woman to wanting Rajnikanth and yep. their chemistry together and yep. kind of the banter back and forth they had I thought was really really good she had great chemistry yep. with Rajnikanth and then at the end obviously she when she was obviously standing up a lot to Rajnikanth she really brought the power I mm -hmm. feel I, did, I, I loved I did her performance too. Uh, I Ever, I was just transfixed and happy. There hasn't been a performance by actresses in the classics, and even some of the more recent things we've seen. This is some of the best acting I've seen from those three and those ladies. As I was looking them up, when I saw that they both committed suicide, I then went on a deep dive mm. into... Um, an issue that it gave me, let's just say it gave me better perspective on why there was so much outrage about Shashant. Mm. Yeah. The number of people, I mean, India alone, the most recent, this is a statistic from the guardian who I think got this from world health organization in 2021, nearly 40% of the world's suicides are Indian. Ooh. And of those suicides, that's awful. 70 to 80 percent of them are women mm. and if you look at the history of indian cinema mm. not just bollywood you look at indian cinema the number of suicides is staggering whether or not conspiracy theorists would say they were murders versus self-inflicted deaths you got a problem yeah there's there is an extraordinary problem. extraordinary problem that i don't think is just a film industry problem in india yeah. it's clearly a mental health and societal issue that has yet to be fully accepted understood or addressed and sadly i, I read something i didn't even know I, you may be able to validate it is it true that swastika mukherjee had once tried to take her own life in the midst of her depression. I know sure. she's been really open and honest about battling with depression and things, but yeah, I'm not sure. it wouldn't surprise me. No. Uh, did you hear, you know, there was an actress in December in Bollywood who I hung think... herself on set? Oh, no, I did not hear that. She was on set, went to the bathroom, they didn't come back, and they found her. She had hung herself. And that was December 24th, just a couple weeks ago. Mm. So... The one unexpected takeaway from this for me was to think about all women, 
but most especially to see those two, I got very emotional mm. watching this, knowing midway through that these ladies at 17 and 20 respectively in the same year died by hanging was to me a, an encapsulated analogy indicative of the total tragedy that I don't know it just it, it needs to be addressed as something much much larger than just conspiracy theories like came up with Shashant not negating the reality of that mm -hmm. I now have a greater understanding mm -hmm. because if you if you I imagine if you live in India which I guess it shouldn't be so much of a surprise because it's the primary issue that you deal with in Three Idiots which is the first Indian film we ever watched mm -hmm. that pressure it's and, yeah. it's it's and there was a moment in the film where somebody said if you don't let her get married she's going to kill herself and that just struck me in the light of of all of that and i don't want to make that the salient pinpointed issue but i think it's an important thing yeah. to talk about because their voices i still hear them now yeah. in ways that it needs to be addressed yeah. in much much better ways because it's a it's it's a it's a an epidemic absolutely yeah i totally agree um and on that uh i also want to talk about the um obviously their performances were beautiful and everything obviously like that i want to talk about the the score of this film uh from the songs itself which were even though it's not a song heavy film like um uh, the film we just watched guide mm -hmm. which had a ton of amazing big songs much much smaller mm -hmm. but some great songs in this yeah obviously um uh, manga's song mm -hmm. about food <laughs> before they had sex essentially <laughs> yeah. which i loved yeah i loved that song a lot of humor there but it was actually a really great song too i was like oh it yeah. was i wish people would sing this to me before they had sex with me <laughs> uh but then also um superstars song almost halfway through yeah that number i know it's an iconic song um uh, and then uh, but actually i love the entire score behind the entire i did film too as well i thought yeah. it was a uh, really really lovely yep i thought it was very creative i i I always set aside my thoughts about overscoring when watching a classic because the standards of the day are yeah. far, far different than they are in, yeah. in cinematic storytelling today. Yeah. I I love the recurring theme that consistently came up. And yeah, I, I not a surprise that he made a, a good score for the film. Another thing, before I forget, that really kind of boggled my mind, and I guess it, it shouldn't. Because I, I remember the first time I saw something like this. There's a moment in the film where... Everybody's, it's before Roger DeConte's song, where they're walking down the hill carrying the deity, mm. and everybody's barefoot. Yeah. Including oh, the ladies. I saw that. And I looked at the ground, and it's nothing but rock. Yeah. Well, I, I remember watching kids in Papua New Guinea play football, barefoot, mm -hmm. no grass, just dirt and rocks. When you grow up that way, your feet can handle it. But oh, yeah. I, I was, I was gobsmacked at that terrain, and everybody happily marching down how many takes they may have had to do i can imagine so that was I very impressive well. to me yeah i noticed that as well yeah 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 uh yeah i love the score uh and all that and so the the one issue that i had with the film was the ending yes yes <laughs> okay you hated and i loved so here here's the thing i actually loved the direction it, it was taking because it, <laughs> it really made him become a villain yeah in the end right right and so i was like this is a turn yeah like, he's no longer our lead hero who we're rooting for right which he's is like, wonderful he was bashing his wife's head in it it had <laughs> the same revolutionary sense of breaking stereotypes that most kamal hassan stuff yes. does and so like he was like bashing his wife's head in right, right. And i was like okay this is not really redeemable anymore no right so like it's like <laughs> He's become a full fledged. He's ta his ego has taken over, yeah. and, and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, okay, this is a turn. I like this. I turn. think all of his compassion was in his left arm, and once yeah. he lost that, he had none. <laughs> which, which I, I did love that he lost his arm because I was not expecting no to lose his arm at all. No, but yeah, the, when that turn happened at the end, where obviously he was making his sister marry somebody else because he didn't want his ego wouldn't let him right. marry, marry uh, this other guy, guy who, loves her. who also I thought did a really good job. Yeah, we haven't talked did. about him. I, I, I enjoyed his performance. I did too. I thought he did a good job. But in the end, uh, when obviously I love the moment when the entire w village was like, "We're not going to let you do this to her." We, actually... which I didn't, I did not expect. No, that. neither did I. I thought he was just eloping with her, like. Go, but they, the whole village came together, and then they left him at the at the the water. And I was like, "Oh, this is great. He's going to have to deal with the fact he's alone now because he's such an ass." 
And then they gave him like this fucking like redemption arc. And I was like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> no. Yeah. No. Well done. He did not deserve that. <laughs> like, I don't. Hope springs eternal. And then he was gaslighting everybody and her. He's like, she loves me so much. And now I'm such a nice guy. You can marry her. I hated it. I hated the ending. <laughs> I, I loved absolutely it. despised it. I loved it. <laughs> he did not. It's like if Big B, like when Big B in the end of K3G gets a redemption arc from being such an asshole the entire <laughs> film. I, I despise it. But that's the thing. I'm okay if you make our main character a villain, but don't give him a redemption arc when he's literally about to kill his wife <laughs> a but that's few the thing. scenes before. His being, his, his being a full-fledged asshole... Mm came after the loss of his arm. Who he was before that was a good guy. No, he was pretty assholey before. No, he was mostly a compassionate guy. Mm. Mostly a compassionate good guy who was caring and uh, was really sweet to his... Uh, you see a, a turn So you think a guy that a bitterness. almost bashed his wife's head and deserves a redemption arc? <laughs> I do because of the love that he has for... Both of those ladies. This is how I would have ended the film. You could have still had everybody him dies. Bashing, no, just leave him standing on the edge of the river, and them going away. Okay. Why do you? I have a question. Why the redemption? I arc? have a question. I've, you've seen the color purple? No, actually. I've Holy seen, crap! Yeah, I've never seen that film. Oprah, right? The color purple. No. That's one of the greatest movies ever made. It's one of Steven Spielberg's finest creations. Yeah, no, I've never seen it. It's the movie that made me realize it's Spielberg. Oprah, right? is, it's Oprah. Right? It's it's Oprah. It's Whoopi Goldberg. It's it's uh, uh, Danny Glover. Yeah, it's, I know. Obviously, I have the color purple. And and I've never seen it. Though. And it is. Um, I remember when I saw it. It was the first time Spielberg had gone into a film he had been known for the blockbusters he'd been mm -hmm. known for jaws and et and close encounters and to hear he was doing something that was an adaptation from a really amazing novel and i'm bringing it up because of the arc and the line and those of you who've seen the color purple will know what i'm talking about the arc of mister in the film mm. you Got to see the color purple. Okay, I'll watch color yeah. purple. I can't now. I'm I can't think of a parallel of another character I'm trying to figure <laughs> out that. But he um, tried to bash his wife's head in and he got a redemption arc? You gotta see the color purple. <laughs> There's nothing I can nothing I can do. I just like Because he, I would that my question would be, how do you feel about the character arc of Mr. in the color purple, but you haven't seen the color purple? Yeah, I just I'm fine with like and I, I enjoyed the fact that they went in a different direction. I wasn't expecting them. Like for him, I was like, okay, this is our hero. He has some flaws. He's really gray, but he's gonna kind of come through and be the hero in the end. But then they took the turn, and he was like, he's really going into his ego side. So you don't like a Christmas Carol, I would imagine, because you don't like what happened to Scrooge. Well, Scrooge never tried to bash anybody's head. Oh my goodness, he had a lifetime of being a giant asshole, yeah. dick, selfish, yeah. idiot, and one night That's has different. some dreams and becomes a completely different person. Having being an ass and almost murdering your wife are two completely different things. I just like, <laughs> like I could have probably really put, when probably, he says I, when he won't give to charity because are the treadmill and the the workhouse not working? I don't care. Uh, I'm talking almost murdering your wife, which be probably if it was in reality bashing her head into a wooden post that many times probably would have killed her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's but true. I'm just like I could probably have forgiven everything else in the film. But the fact that he literally, like, if I took my wife's head and poof, 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 and then got a redemption arc in the end, I, I wouldn't have deserved it. I, I'm, I'm a believer in that even the farthest of us that are as lost and degenerate as can be still have the capacity for redemption. No. Nah. You damn them all. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Difference of perspective. Yes, it is, and it makes it makes it wonderful it to been, talk about. I think it would have been a much nicer ending, though. If you like, I was like, it's a strong moment. Him just contemplating what he's done on the river's edge, and everybody else leaving him behind because he's such an ass. That would have been better. Versus him realizing he had a momentary lapse of reason and becoming who he is genuinely, mm -hmm. and everything being restored. He deserves yeah. to die on the river. Yeah, of course. Uh, <laughs> but I, I enjoyed the film outside of the I ending. Knew, I knew we were going to have a conversation about the I end. Just, I loved the end, and I, I thought, Corbin's going to hate have, that. India, for some reason, loves these redemption arcs. So does Disney. Yeah, they do, and that's yeah. a big problem I have Happy with Disney. Happy endings. 
Once upon a time. You can have a happy ending for a happy story. Once upon a time. That and they it. lived happily ever after. It's been the beginning and ending of stories forever for How many of those stories would the lead bashes his wife's head in? How many of them? Watch the color Th- purple. That's like having somebody who's like, ah, oh, he raped a little child and being like, in the end, who he's, he's... Do he's- you like the character arc for Darth Vader? Did he rape a child? I don't remember that part in the Star Wars. <laughs> what are you talking about? You think you think Anakin Skywalker and Darth Vader are good guys? Yeah, but Darth Vader. He, uh, granted, Spoiler. Vader was never married and didn't bash his wife's head in. True. I guess that's the he did. unforgivable sin. You know, the unforgivable was actually murdering a bunch of children. What makes the entirety murdering a bunch of children? What makes the entirety the central story of the entire Star Wars saga is not Luke. Yeah, but he... It's the redemption of Anakin Skywalker. But he died in the end. Which was... Which is fine. <laughs> but... Which is fine. He... But he... Redeemed. That's... But you he, would have preferred... That's fine. He could have been like... The I'm emperor s- to have killed him. I, he could have done this. I'm so sorry. Poof, and then died. And then I would have been fine. Yeah, but the... <laughs> so... Saying you're sorry is fine, but sure, just make sure that some you still die not, for what you've done. Some stuff is not totally forgivable. Gotcha. <clears throat> so that is the unpardonable sin. Bashing your wife's head in? Yeah, that's I, the unpardonable one. If you bashed your wife's head in, I don't know if I could work with you anymore, Rick. Well, that's different. <laughs> Saying I don't know that if I could work with you anymore <laughs> is very different than wishing I was dead. Did you kill your wife in this scenario? <laughs> Anyways, let us know yeah. what you thought about the film and what should be the next Tamil classic superstar Rajnikanth film, old or new, yeah. as well. Uh, with the newer ones, just make sure it's one that we'd be able to enjoy as well, not something that's like just for his fans right? as well. Something that, it doesn't have to be full Now I want to see the big over the top. Yeah, I want, want, want to know I'll, who he's been, I'll, who he evolved into. Yeah, I we know, know we're going to watch the cigarette throws. Yeah, and, but I, I still want to be able to fully enjoy the film and yeah. I know some of his films are just for his fans as right, well right um, so you guys can let us know what the next Superstar Rajakon film or other Tamil classics that we can get into down below <laughs>